What's up, beautiful people? Corwin L. Gilliams here, I King Amongst Kings, CLG Lifestyle, Crown and Robe, all that good stuff. Influencing you to self-love, coming at you with another video. If you did not check out my previous video, um, where I talked about, you know, all consequences, or should I say all decisions, um, all bad decisions, you know, you cannot recover from. And I know that's a hard pill to swallow for some because, you know, we hear the scripture that talks about all things work out for the good of those who love God. But the truth of the, of the matter is, is that, and you can, we can um, reference uh, biblical knowledge for this, for this, uh, for this truth, right? And I gave one, um, I gave one in the video when it came to Queen Vashti and es in the book of Esther. So if you guys don't know the story, um, Queen Vashti was basically dethroned, demoted, and essentially exiled from her, her authority, from her role, from her influence, because simply because she made a decision not to go into the king's uh, celebration when he called her to come in because he wanted you know the people to see who she was and how beautiful she was this is what the word says and so for so so for whatever reason you know queen vashti was like you know today i'm not feeling it today i'm not going in and um and so as the story goes you know she was basically dethroned um she was replaced uh, by esther and this is how you know uh, esther came into influence and became the savior for the jewish generation uh at the time now Queen Vashti and her, you know, being in her mood or whatever. I mean, that's one part of the story, but ultimately it was all part of God's plan, right? But the, the fact of the matter is, or the truth of the matter is, is that Queen Vashti, we never heard of her again. You know, she was not talked about again. And from the revelation that I got was that she lost legacy. You know what I'm saying? She lost an entire legacy because of a decision. Now, we do want to take into consideration, you know, what the lifestyle was like for these people even before God decided to move Queen Esther in, right? We don't know the types, you know, we don't know the type of lifestyle that these people lived. Um, clearly, they were not, um, clearly they were pagans because, or should I say not followers of, of the Lord because um, if they were, you know what I'm saying, um, Haman and, you know, the king at the time would have not, you know, established that decree to wipe out all the jewish people in the land so clearly they were not followers of the god of abraham isaac and jacob right so we don't know what lifestyle these people had um what lifestyle that rulership was subscribing to as far as uh spirituality as far as uh, as far as religion but we do know um that they were not i believe they were not uh followers of the god of abraham isaac and jacob and so Hence the reason why they needed Esther, right? Hence the reason God's plan was to bring in Esther to have her change and shift the projection of, of what would have been had it not been, again, for God's grace and his love for his people. So this God who is all-knowing, you know, who sees the beginning from the end, you know, had already established his seed, um, had already, uh, already established his people, whether it was Mordecai, who was Esther's uh, uncle, and just the whole situation, you understand what I'm saying? From Esther being an orphan, Esther having, to, uh, Mordecai having to raise Esther, all of that stuff comes into, you know, it, when you get into it you see god's grace and his and his and his divine strategy in accomplishing his plan for mankind now with that being said there are decisions you understand what i'm saying that you know sometimes human beings make regardless if you are you know you've you've experienced the grace of god you've you know you you know the lord for yourself um and you know or not you know sometimes decisions that we make can be eternally detrimental meaning that you know there's no coming back from it now there may be uh you know god may orchestrate a situation that you know may be similar or maybe you know different but sometimes your decision can you can never come back from it right and i think about the decisions and i'm going to give you some examples of this i'm going to qualify what i'm saying here think about First, I gave the example of Queen Vashti, right? I gave that yesterday in the video. Check that out. Um, so Queen Vashti is an example of making a poor decision and never coming back from that. Think about the Israelites, right? When they were uh, delivered from their slavery from Egypt, 
and they were in the wilderness for 40 years. Now, this was a journey, according to the word of God, that should have taken 11 days. I should have took 11 days, but it took 40 years, right? So this essentially was 40 years of God's grace, mercy, patience, understanding, you know, protection, patience, right? Patience upon patience to have these people figure it out or not figure it out, but get the faith that they needed to get into the promised land, the land that God had already established for them he had already you know uh, prepared for them right it wasn't anything that they had to do except live by faith and so uh we see that you know 40 years it took the, that uh, specific generation before they got it uh before the lord said you know what the door is shut like i'm closing the door you know what i'm saying like y'all y'all wasting my time here you understand what i'm saying y'all i'm done with you guys the patience of god ran out and i think like i said people it's a hard, this is a hard pill to swallow for people who may have received you know what i'm saying just false interpretations of the bible or or fleshly interpretations of the bible where you know we understand god is a gracious god we understand god is a loving god and he's merciful and he's all these good things but god also is a god of vengeance he's also a god of judgment he's also a god who knows our hearts and knows when people are taking advantage of the situation and when people just don't care and so i don't think it's any aspect of the wisdom of god or when it comes to the wisdom of god for god to say you know what you know, I discern or I see this person doesn't care about what I'm doing in their life and I'm just gonna allow them to trash me until, you know, they, they feel like they don't feel like it, right, anymore. And it's like, okay, yes, God, and, and, and the thing is, we do that, you know, we do play God. I feel like sometimes we do take advantage of the Lord's goodness and what he's done for us. I, I can admit myself, I've done it, and I've always thanked God for, you know, the opportunity to come back remorsefully and repentantly, you know, and, 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 and really be, sorrowful about you know the times that i've taken advantage of god the times that i've you know i knew that i was supposed to do certain things and i didn't do it and so i think that's what's really important when it comes to your spiritual walk and getting back up again it's not falling down and saying ah to hell with this or ah you know i'm not you know whatever it's done no it's humbling yourself and, and recognizing your weakness recognizing your need for god and most times when we do, most times when a person does fall, it has to do with pride. It has to do with them at some point feeling like they could have dealt with the situation themselves or, or overcome a situation themselves or feeling, getting too big headed. And I sound what I'm saying? And, and feeling like, you know, they got this, like Saul, right? And so once you maintain that, that humility, not humility defined by human beings, but humility defined what I believe to be honorable in the eyes of God, where, you know, you understand your need, your total reliance, no matter how small or how big of God, of, you know, your total reliance for God's uh, protection, provision, and everything seen and unseen that God does for you and you don't even know about it. So going back to what I was saying about qualifying, um, you know, certain bad decisions, right? So one, so I said Queen Vashti, right? That's an example of an unbeliever, right? Um, and now we have believers, right? The, the the children of Israel in the wilderness, right? 40 years, right? It was basically God being patient with them as far as getting them to change their mindset, you understand? To come into agreement with what his plans were for them, right? And they just couldn't get it. And so it's eventually he says, you know what, that's it. And he basically said, you know, the, um, the younger generation, he's gonna wait till the younger generation gets of age, gets to a legal age, quote unquote, right? Before he now takes over their lives and now leads them into the promised land. So he basically waited until the older generation died out because he said, you know, they're not getting into the promised land. Then, you know, he was basically pissed. The Lord was pissed. You understand? This is another thing that people don't realize that, you know, God, the Lord gets angry, right? He, <laughs> he has feelings, he has emotions. You understand? I mean, we're made in the image and likeness of God, people. We don't want to get too spiritual, spiritually, you know what I'm saying, uh, so deep that we we miss the practicality of, of God in many ways as far as him coming as a man, as far as him living, you know, the way that he intended for us to live in a man called Jesus Christ. And the things that Jesus felt and how he lived was a, basically an example of how we are to live or how God intended for us to live. And so the Lord, you know, and another thing, another thing to add to this is that, you know, we, we came from God. We, we ascended. Or should I say we descended, right? Before we, we ascend, we descended. We came from the Spirit of God. So 
we we already was before we were if that makes sense right we, we were already before we were manifested as human beings and so um so yeah so so eventually he was like you know what <laughs> I'm done with this generation and I'm going to raise up these little ones who hopefully have more faith and, and, and more trusting and more loyal. And, and these young ones who have seen, hallelujah, they've seen my power. They've seen my miracles. They've seen the wonders that I've done in, in your life and, and, and in their life. And hopefully, hopefully because I am a gracious God, because, and this is still God's grace, still God's grace extending upon the next generation, because God could say, you know, I'm done with this generation. I'm done with this race of people, this nation of people, period. But here, here God's grace is extended. And this goes back to the wisdom of God that I was saying about, you know, people think that God is supposed to allow, you know, God is supposed to accept foolishness for a lifetime. And it's just like, no, like at a certain point, if God sees that you're doing something, if the Lord sees that you're doing something that's just, you know, you're just being wicked, just rootlessly wicked without a care in the world. You think that he's going to allow that forever or until you decide to change? No, there are things that's going to happen in your life where God is going to instruct you and, and lead you and open your eyes. You know what I'm saying? And, and provide opportunities for you to learn. Like I can remember, you know, when my first time of, of doing something that was probably the worst, right? I've probably ever done. Probably. I don't know. But I remember now, and I was 17, 18, got arrested and all of that, almost went to jail and everything. And I remember that was an opportunity for me <laughs> where the Lord was like, you know, was checking me. He was like, you know, you, you know, you, you may want to do what these people do, but you can't do what these people do. I, you know, you, you weren't created for that. You wasn't created for the lifestyle. So get this little check right here. You know, you're not going to jail. You're going to get arrested. You're going to have three years probation, but learn from this. And so that's an example for me you know of, of god's grace of his love of his protection where he has to teach us and discipline us in a way right and so um so yeah so like i was saying you know these kids these um so the lord so this is god's grace again extending to the next generation of people whom you know we hope that they are you know they'll exercise more faith they'll live you know be more steadfast and, and more unapologetic and more uncompromising about the, the goodness of God and the grace of God and what he's done for them. And that's what he, you know, is doing today in our lives. You know, you may be someone of a generation whom, you know, you may have seen or heard of the goodness of God by those who came before you. And, you know, but you never really seen anything change as far as life, as far as prosperity, as far as love, as far as forgiveness. You may have strife and division in your family, jealousy, envy, poverty, um, sexual perversion all these different things that may be pervading your uh your, your, your bloodline and it's like you know you see the goodness of god you've heard your family members and people around you talk about god's goodness but you're not seeing god like who was it uh the mighty man of valor gideon gideon was like if god be where where is god in all this craziness where is god with all this stuff going on but god god is always around god is always around he's just looking for people a ready and willing heart to do what he's asking us to do to live the life that he's asking us to live and to live and it only takes one person right so you know so decisions again you know this the, the decisions of the children of israel to not live by faith even after the 40 years of miracles and wonders that the lord was given ultimately you know that the lord did ultimately had them suffer consequently they did not go into the promised land they didn't they did not experience the goodness the abundance of fruits you understand when uh caleb and joshua went to scout out the land you know they did not experience it but joshua and caleb did joshua caleb and their children did and so this is for you you know this is for us you know we want to bring people with us we want you know people to experience the goodness of god but first we have to do what we have to do for ourselves first we have to be uh live the life that god designed for us to live we have to be an an exemplification of God's goodness, of his prosperity, of his abundance individually. And as we do that individually, just like Abraham did, and then as Abraham uh, Abraham did, Lot who followed, uh, followed along, Lot was also blessed. And so as you do, those who choose to follow along, because not everyone followed Abraham, right? Those who choose to follow along will be blessed by association. All God is, all God needs is one person, one obedient servant, child, beloved masterpiece who is fearfully and wonderfully made and knows it to follow and hearken on to the voice of god to manifest his goodness to live exceedingly and abundantly by faith and to believe that with god all things are possible and there it is there it is y'all that's it you know um 
So with that being said, beautiful people, be blessed by this message and I'll probably come on a little later to do another video. Corwin L. Gilliams, talk to you guys soon. Love y'all.